Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching another edition of Prometheus University. And in this edition, part six of the nine part series on bending stress analysis and design, we'll be talking about lateral torsional buckling, okay? And it's part B of our beam stability talk. So I would strongly suggest you watch part five of this series where we introduce the concept of buckling. Okay, and that was a very intuitive addition. Okay, and this will also be the same way. In other words, we'll not have a lot of numbers. We intuited a few parameters and talked about buckling in general sense and then ended up with the Euler formula. In this video, we're going to briefly go over the material from the last video where we developed a concept of buckling. So over to the left, we have enumerated right, some ideas that we developed as we discussed the buckling problem in the last video. And over to the right, we have diagrams representing columns. The blue diagram represents a column, a compression member, a ruler, for example, that is uncompressed with no load on it. And then to the right, we have a buckled ruler. Right. So the failure mode of buckling is something we discussed and we know that we have a visceral understanding of and an intuition for. We know that buckling is associated with compression as stated in number one. Right. And then we mentioned in number two that since bending involves compression and tension, we would not be surprised uh, if the phenomenon of buckling manifest itself in the portion of the beam that undergoes compression, right? Because buckling is associated with compression, bending involves tension and compression, so there will be a portion of the beam subject, as it were, to the phenomenon of buckling. From number three and below, we intuited parameters that affect the manner in which buckling is manifested, right? And the buckling load. These parameters affect, therefore, the phenomenon of buckling. They are parameters in that we would therefore not be surprised to see in an equation for the buckling load. And to quickly go over those, we talked about the cross-section affecting the buckling load, the length of the column affecting the buckling load, the moment of inertia, the relative moments of inertia from the, depending on different orientations, affect the manner in which buckling occurs. And buckling depends on the elastic modulus of the column. And uh, Add number seven here, buckling depends on the support conditions. And we discussed the K factor, the factor with which we represent the support condition parameter, right? And it's called the effective length factor. And we discussed this in the last video all the way through to the Euler equation. In the Euler equation, we see the parameters that we intuited. We did not, however, take a deep dive into the empirical data that led to the particular functional form and what the pi squared is about, right? Because, however, uh, furthermore, I should say that there are other adjustments and coefficients added to the Euler equation depending on steel, concrete, and wood design in, written into the different design codes. But the idea here was to intuit parameters with which we can conceptualize the phenomenon of buckling, right? So moving on, we're going to look at this idea of lateral torsional buckling. What is lateral torsional buckling? To start out, right? Let's look back again at this idea of regular buckling, which is, by the way, could be called flexural buckling. So we go back to our blue column, our blue ruler that is unloaded. And we have our loaded to the point of buckling ruler in red. If we look at the cross section of these, right, of the same ruler, what happened to the cross section at any point, right? It translated. In this case, right, it, it translated from left to right or right to left, looking at the cross section. So there's been a lateral 
displacement. So this can be called lateral buckling, right? Lateral torsional buckling, however, is a phenomenon that occurs when there is bending as opposed to pure compression. And we're about to see how that occurs. So let's take that blue object there, that blue smiley face to be our bent beam that has, let's say it's a rectangular cross section. Therefore, the top half is in compression. The bottom half is in tension as shown. Agreed? Right? So if we take at the cross section of that beam and we look at the top half and the bottom half, we know that the top half being in compression is the portion of the beam that's going to be subjected to the phenomenon of buckling, not the bottom half, right? Buckling does not occur as a failure mode of tension, right? So recall, right, if we look back up, we talked about flexural buckling, we talked about the lateral translation of the cross section. So the question down below is what happens in terms of translation, in terms of movement, in terms of displacement, of change in position of this particular cross section that undergoes bending, right? If we bend this to the point where the top portion of the beam buckles, right? What would that translation look like? So it turns out that since it's only the top portion of the beam which is in compression or the portion of the beam in compression, whichever part that happens to be, top or bottom, since it's only that part that is subject to the phenomenon of buckling, it is the only part that wishes to translate. So the translation will occur in the manner shown to the right here. It's not only going to move, but it's also going to cause a rotation about the axis of the beam itself which is usually called a torsion, right? When we twist something about its axis like that. Hence the term lateral torsional buckling, okay? Lateral translation and the torsional due to the twist. This is why the phenomenon is called lateral torsional buckling. And it is related to the fact that only a portion of the beam is in compression and therefore subject to the phenomenon of buckling. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it like the other videos and if you did please go ahead and subscribe to our page and to our current subscribers we will endeavor in the future to put out the remainder of these videos for the bending stress series in a timely manner. We're looking to put the rest of the videos together and uploaded here in a few weeks. Thank you very much.